Good morning from Karbala, Iraq. Today we're taking a day trip to the ancient city of Babylon. Every good morning in Iraq starts with a good cup of chai. And this one, I must say, is really good. I'm joined by a rare traveler in Iraq. His name is Max, so today we're going to take the day trip to Babylon together. So, uh, but again, first we have some chai. Seems like the typical breakfast here is heart. Place after place, that's what they're eating. We found a guy that's going to make his omelets. Okay, I know, I know it's not typical Iraqi food, but come on guys, omelet. Now we're taking a minibus from Karbala to Hilla to go to Baba. Good news, we have Ali here, a local from Hilla, and he's offered to actually show us around Babylon. So instead of having to take a taxi to Babylon, we've got a local here. Thank you so much, man. You're welcome. Hi, I'm welcome in Mesopotamia. Just got our entry ticket to Babylon Archaeological Site. It's 25,000 IDRs. Guys, we are at Ishtar Gate. Well, the fake one, the reconstruction. The real one is in Berlin, but I'm still excited to be at the fake one. It's it, it looks it looks good to me. Why not? In 1891, the German he worked here inside Babylon City. He found this gate, and he took with him to the Berlin Museum. There's two animals, this one and this one, because the Babylonian people he believed about this animal like a god. Mm -hmm. Okay. In Babylonian language, Mardoch. He is a legendary animal. Why? He collects many strong animals in one. Head, dragon, body, fish, front legs, lion, back legs, eagle, and the tail, the snake, and the head also still like a scorpion. Another <laughs> animal, he is a cow. He is God, he is named Adet. This one. Adet, God from the air, sky, and the rain. You see this animal inside Babylon city original. This is the place where you see in the map. This is all original from 2,600 years ago. Original. It's target at that time here in this place. You see, and everything here you see original during Nebuchadnezzar. Angels yeah. from the head. The enemy will not cross. Okay. Why? Because the Babylonian people who believe that the enemy was for Damascus. The condition of these structures is incredible. The detail is still completely visible. It's 2,600 years old. They expect maybe he will come. We just saw two European tourists walk by. There's almost no foreign tourists here. More tourists should come. You should come here. You, you, tell should, him. you should come here. Come here. Visas are easy, amazing country. And you are welcome. You are welcome. <laughs> you see, sir, I am the present Saddam Hussein. I built again this palace in 1978. You see? In time of the leader, support by God. Imagine, this is the first line just to mention that uh, God support him and protect him just before and after his leave. Walking in the main courtyard, it's very big, very open and very sunny. We just finished visiting the Babylon archaeological site. Now we're on the way to see one of Saddam's palaces. Welcome to a view of Babylon. We've arrived at one of Saddam's palaces, the one that overlooks the archaeological site of Babylon. And uh, we're going to go inside, take a look. Did 
there's graffiti everywhere. Do you know why there's so much graffiti? Yeah. So it's not like a yes. message against Saddam or anything? No, no, it's, it's just something graffiti. rubbish. It's something oh, okay, okay. Because the whole, I mean, all the walls are covered with graffiti. This entire palace is built quite high so that you can have a view of Babylon City. But in order to raise the ground to this height so that you can have a nice view, they brought in tons of earth, poured it here, covered who knows what as far as historical archaeological remains underneath this property. It's just giant room after giant room after giant room. And apparently, he didn't even spend one day here. We're actually not far from Saddam's palace. This is the historical Euphrates River. During Saddam's dictatorship, no one was allowed, of course, anywhere near his palace. Now people are barbecuing. Actually, people are barbecuing on both sides having a great time. Now we're gonna walk in and see an example of a Babylonian house. And here we go, let's go inside. Oh wow, it's so much cooler in here. It's pretty dark. Oh, the, uh, the roof is all wood, huh? Yeah, see this kind of roof, it's a cooling system. They have this hole and they built it from leaf and wood just to make it cool. Cooler yeah. than the outside. It's way cooler than outside. Yeah. A hangout area where the big parties happen. <laughs> Our next stop is the Theater of Babylon. Just several weeks ago, they had a concert here, the Babylon concert. They've left quite a bit of trash around, so if you've noticed that, that's probably where it's from. A bit too much trash, but hopefully they'll clean it up. Ziggurat were being built about 2000 BC to about 500 BC. Big structures that raise the ground higher and higher, trying to help you get closer to the heavens. So the higher you are, the closer you are to the heavens. Right now there's one particular guy who's trying to get really close to the heavens. When you're up here, it actually doesn't look so high. But then when you look back down, you realize they built almost mini mountain actually and then of course the the peak even higher it's pretty impressive I think they said it was uh, 70 meters high and uh, built thousands of years ago our time is coming to a close with our gracious host Ali Unfortunately, uh, for now we might meet again it took us all over Hela, Babylon uh, the ziggurat fed us, took us to the mall. We had an amazing time, amazing conversation. Typical Iraqi hospitality. You're welcome. I will be glad to uh, do anything to help. <laughs> Iraqi hospitality is second to none. And the history in Iraq is second to none. I mean, literally the birthplace of civilization, literally of so many civilizations. Again, thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Found a cute little authentic kebab shop, 1,000 dinar. Really like it. Love local places like this. <laughs> We're at one of the million sweet shops in Karbala. Dehin, he's letting us try Dehin, is it? Oh wow, it's so gooey. Oh, it's warm. Oh wow, mmm. Mm, it's not too sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's sweet, but mm. but I think I want to try Znudasid. Looks like it takes skill to make this, man. 
like filo dough pastry or something? Wow. <laughs> This would be great with some chai. <laughs> it's sweet, crispy filo dough, pistachios on top. Znudasid. <laughs> Sounds funny. We're also going to try some dahin. Dahin. Nuts and I'm sure sugar. Wow, that's a lot of nuts. Mm. But definitely good with chai. Mm. Chai without sugar. We're trying to pay this man. How much, please? No, come on. Ismik, Haider, Rahman, and Max. Shukran. An unsweetened chai after all that sweet. There's good tea everywhere. Although it's really hot right now. Oh my god. Mm. Oh, so nice.